Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. I want to uh, talk today uh, about devastating famine that has stricken my homeland, Somalia. Uh, I want to send this message to the international community, particularly the major players, which is the members of the Security Council, the five permanent members, uh, and Muslim world. This famine uh, is heart wrenching. Every to see their uh, compatriots suffering, the pictures that we have seen, uh, people actually trekking hundreds of miles just to uh, reach food and safety and shelter, is really mind boggling. Uh, this is the worst famine 60 years. Uh, the famine is a cyclical. Uh, issue that happens to Somalia. The problem is drought that actually morphed into a famine. Today, uh, the problem we, we see, hundreds of thousands of Somali have died, especially the children. We have about 29,000 Somali children died for the last uh, uh, year and a half. This famine was preventable. Uh, two years ago, the international community uh, has predicted that this is going to happen when terrorist group Al Shabaab ejected the international uh, agencies that provide food to millions of Somalis. So uh, it was actually predictable, and it's, many people said that it's going to have to happen. So uh, I cannot stress enough about the human tragedy that Somali people are facing today, especially those uh, who live in central Somalia. Mogadishu area and other parts of Somalia. We are actually witnessing, as the United Nations said, 670,000 Somalis are going to perish for the next couple of months if the world does not actually take immediate proactive action. We are very grateful so far the international community what they have done, but this is actually too little too late. We need a massive humanitarian assistance to the people of Somalia, starving people, and we are grateful those who has actually done the, uh, the something already, but we want more. Uh, the problem of Somalia, although the famine is actually the world is seeing it, the underlying issue is there is no government, viable government in Somalia that can or have the capacity to deliver food and services to the starving Somali people. So we have seen this problem of famine, famine in Somalia, it happened in 1992, it happened in 1975. Uh, fortunately, in 1975, we have a government, a viable government, that provided airlifted hundreds of thousands of Somalis from northern part of Somalia to a fertile land of south. In 1992, the world was eager to actually uh, do something about uh, famine in Somalia that was caused by the thugs and warlords who were actually using food as a weapon. When the President Bush Sr. ordered a Marine Expeditionary Force of 35,000 to actually force feed the Somalis and, uh, because of what happened in Somalia. So, the underlying problem that we have today that there is no viable government in Somalia that can handle the enormous humanitarian situation crisis that Somalia faces. This so called government is actually a bunch of people who does not have capacity to handle uh, the Somali issues. The international community is telling us, particularly the countries like the United States, Europe, are saying they support the interim government under the Sharif's leadership, uh, the interim uh, uh, under Sharif. This is actually an insult to Somali people. These people cannot handle anything. They don't have the capacity to handle anything at all. They failed miserably, uh, consistently, for the last two years. They knew this was going to happen. The world has actually warned about it. They don't control anything. The Amisom and international organizations that are there, and OU, are the ones who actually control the security. They do not care about Somalia. But we need to know, tell, and I want to send this, stress this, and tell this message, send this message to the international community, particularly the United States, is that the, there is no viable government in Somalia. The information that we receive all the time, that there is a viable government, that does not actually exist. 
That's why Somalia problem is actually getting worse and worse. And until international community realize the fact and remove their blinders and say we have to do something about the problem, this famine is going to happen again and again because we have seen this movie before. This is a deja vu. So we urge the international community, particularly the Western countries uh, and the Muslim countries, to come to the aid of Somali people. And we also urge that the United States and the international community to provide Somalia a framework, a chance to have a viable government that's drawn from its people. We don't want imposed policy bottled by Muslim Higa, who is a um, United Nations uh, head of the United Nations Office of uh, a political office of Somalia. He is virtually in charge of Somalia. He became what they called in the colonial era, they used to call like a viceroy of Somalia. That's what we have today. We have no government. We have no responsible institutions. We don't have any parliament. These 550 people are a bunch of thugs and that doesn't know anything about government. The so-called government, they still systematically loot government funds intended for these starving people. So for the international community to tell us that this is a government that's actually responsible for Somali people and they're going to lead us uh, to a, a, a viable government in the future, it's actually not going to happen. We know that the international community has actually, especially the United States, has outsourced its policy towards Somalia to Ethiopia. We know that the Uganda and Ethiopia are the ones who are actually in charge under the supervision of Mr. Mahiga, the United Nations. So we have no uh, government that actually can take care of Somalia. We want that the United Nations, particularly the Security Council, to realize the fact that the Somalis are fed up. We cannot see our people dying in hundreds of thousands because uh, of a people who are irresponsible being put in charge of Somalia. We are tired of the United Nations telling us that there is a political process. We are tired, uh, the Somali people are tired of uh, political office so-called Mr. Mahiga, who is actually acting like colonial uh, administrator of Somalia, telling that we have to, that, like what happened in Uganda, the audacity of Uganda in collusion with Ethiopia and the supervision of Mahiga to actually set up the system whereby the government of Uganda is guaranteeing to implement, to set up who's going to be president, who's going to be uh, speaker of the house, how long the government will stay. This is an insult. This is a violation of the sovereignty of Somali people. I want to stress, tell the world, that this cannot go on. We, the Somali people, want and demand that Somali sovereignty should be restored, that the decision about Somalia should be decided by the Somalis, not Mahika, not the Ethiopian, not the Sanawi, not Museveni. We need that we decide our future. We don't want three M's, Museveni, Mahika, and Melis to decide the future of Somalia. That's what's happening today. And I stress that we must have the United Nations, particularly Security Council, has to allow the Somalis to set up their own uh, policy whereby we draw the people from the regions uh, as the parliamentarians. Those groups will elect the president. Then the president will set up committees whereby these committees will be empowered to draft a constitution that will allow the Somalis to have a viable solution. So what is the solution? The solution is we have to realize, we have to rely ourselves. The solution has to be a Somali solution. It cannot, any policy that you import from New York or from Nairobi or from Addis or from anywhere is not going to help Somali. We have to put aside our tribal and cleavage differences. We have seen what lack of government and lack of a nation, when the nation becomes failed state or broken state, what happens to our people. Today, the world may can help you. They can assist you once or more, twice. But the world is not going to take care. It's not going to clean your house. It's not going to take care of Somalia. We, as the Somalis, can take care of that. But we need the assistance of the international community, particularly the major powers, to say clearly that there is no government and there must be a solution for Somali people. We cannot continue this endless facade whereby the international community are saying Somalia has interim government and every year they're adding one more year, two more years, one more year. This is an insult. This is actually a direct attack to Somali sovereignty, it's direct attack to Somali territorial integrity, it's direct attack of Somali dignity. So we have to have a program whereby 
the Somalis can come together and hammer out their difference. We have to also use and take advantage of enormous intellectual capacity and uh, knowledge of Somali diaspora. We have to actually, the Somalis must get up and say enough is enough and we have to do something about it. Unless we do that, we are going to have the same problem again. The drought, although it's environmental, the underlying problem is the war. Somalia has no viable government for the last 20 years. So, although the drought happened, it could be mitigated, but it cannot be mitigated because of the continuous uh, actually fighting and continuous civil war and continuous uh, lack of government, whereby there's no government in Somalia who can handle the security situation. Unless you have a security situation, unless you have a stable, viable government, this drought will actually morph uh, again and again to a famine whereby hundreds of Somalis will die. And sooner or later, the country will be emptied of Somalis. This is what's happening. So we have to wake up and do something about it. And I hope the international community, particularly the United States, will change its policy of actually dual track, which is actually direct attack of Somali national unity, Somali national uh, uh, identity. Because having dual track, talking to tribal groups, is not what Ethiopia wants. It's unfortunate that uh, President Obama and Secretary Hillary Clinton is allowing the policy such a policy to actually happen. We want unified Somalia. Somalia is a small nation. People are ethnically the same. There's no difference in Somalis. Linguistically, religiously, ethnicity-wise, we're the same people. You cannot divide a people who are ethnically the same, the most homogeneous people. So we hope that the United States will change the policy, and we will hope the United States will admit that there is no functioning government in Somalia, and this cannot continue. And the international community, I hope, will also realize that, and we hope the Somalis will rise up and say enough is enough. And I thank you very much.